Alrighty then, so this is a quick tutorial on how you will be able to use uh, my various scripts and things. Um, this specific one is on how to, well, basically brute force test the RNG for certain uh, things to happen that you're looking for. Um, so the first thing that we're actually going to look into is how often we can get crits. And this is entirely empirical, which means that we're forcing the RNG to be a certain thing uh, beforehand, testing it, see if it actually happens, and then reverting it back. Um, so first things is you actually do need a bunch of these values. I found them ahead of time so I know, uh, for example, what RNG the what RNG address it's going to be using, and I also know what um, what kind of condition I'm looking for, what actually turns it into be um, a, a critical hit in this case. And what will happen is that if you get a crit, this is going to be forced to four, um, this first nibble. So um, I can force that by setting, by forcing the RNG to be zero at the start, and then if I just punch him right now, um, we're going to wind up with, you can see that uh, a 4 appeared, we're getting a crit in this case, and this happens before the calculation of whether or not you actually hit. So, um, now that we know those things, the script is built around trying to abuse that. So, you can see I get a, a crit, good, awesome, um, but let's see how often that actually occurs. So, the script is built around knowing those addresses ahead of time. Um, in this case, uh, we're going to be looking for um, address A18 as our conditional, A18, and we know that the RNG is at this 52C. So um, the rest of this is all just control stuff so that we can get things going through correctly. So um, once these are set up, uh, you this check condition function it basically just monitors your condition and see and makes a statement of okay well is this what I expect it to be or not and then keeps a running count of that. In this case we're just trying to determine whether there's a crit or not so it works perfectly fine uh, and then the rest of it just kind of runs through uh, for a set amount of time and finishes out while all the time also like reporting uh, what it's doing it sets the random uh, seed by itself and just goes from there. So let's uh, let's give this a try. And to actually operate this, you're going to start from a state, and something to look for, uh, you can see at the very top, uh, we've got um, this uh, 270217. That's the, the frame counter of what we're currently at. So to actually abuse this, what we're going to want to do, uh, first things first, poke in the value that you want. So in this case, I'm forcing the RNG to be four zeros. And now I'm going to advance one frame and I'm going to make two save states. Uh, two is just my preference. You can do it with only one. But we can already see that um, the punch is already on, or the, the cursor is already on using punch three. And all I have to do is press a button and advance the frames uh, in order to to continue on. So right now I'm holding the A button. Uh, it's going to go through and it's going to start. So it hasn't used the RNG value yet, uh, but it will as soon as we actually uh, see when the crit happens. So I'm advancing frame by frame. Uh, it's probably very hard to see, but um, the, the number at the top is incrementing. And just now uh, at 270, 227, um, it changed to be critical at uh, at that frame. So to use the script correctly, what I'm going to need to do is go back. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to go straight back to my prior save state. And I'm going to just advance up to two frames before that. So that was 227. Uh, that means we're going to go to 225. Five. And I'm going to make a new save state here just so I can come back to it if need be. And what we're going to do is we're going to test for the crit. So to actually start that up, you just uh, queue it up in the, the Lua uh, console. You toggle it on. And then you advance the frame one more time, and it'll go. So there it goes. It's just flying away now. And 
I have it currently set to go a thousand iterations, so we've got this uh, iteration count going as well as the count immediately below it is the number of times that we actually hit our, our target, which in this case is making sure that the crit happens. And right now it's just going to keep going and going. Uh, this running tally of the approximate percentage that it happens, um, it will hone in pretty quickly on around where the, the true percentage is, but uh, you might still have a, a long way to go. You need a much larger sample size to, to ensure uh, that it's actually uh, within that range. Um, for example, this is only going out to a thousand. To be sure that your, your value is within a percentage point of what the actual true may, mean is, you'd probably need something closer to, to like 8,000. Um, but yeah, according to this, we, we had a thousand attempts. We did 232 uh, hits that were critical, and that corresponds to 23.2%. Uh, and you can do this with anything. Um, the critical success, uh, this is just from my own experience, but for this game, uh, it corresponds to the particular enemy or perhaps how many are left. So you might need to whittle it down to a single enemy left before um, it'll start to correspond correctly. So just keep that in mind. Um, but this is good for when you're trying to find a case of, uh, for example, just an instance of something happening, and it'll pick that up. What if you want to try and find damage ranges? Well, I have a modified script that, that'll go through that. Uh, it, it all works on the same general concepts. It's just now, rather than getting uh, one additional hit, um, it's going to uh, instead try and track a couple of other things. So uh, in this case, at the very top, um, we've got the same RNG address. We've got this new address that corresponds to the damage that you're about to do to an enemy uh, before it pops up. So that's that's one thing that we're going to try and key in on. And again, we just advance one frame and one uh, 1,000 iterations. RNG setup is the same, uh, but the condition now is a little different. Um, so we have the new address that's going in. There's this function is just something I made because they represent the number a little strangely. Um, don't worry about it too much. You can kind of ignore that for now. Um, but then instead of just tracking it's going up by one or otherwise, we have the we're tracking a maximum and a minimum uh, value. Um, so that we can actually get the full range of the, the damage that you're dealing. In addition, we're keeping a sum so that we can uh, get an average at the end of the day and figure out what the actual average damage is um, that you're doing. So other than that, it all works out the same. Um, goes through, there's some different initialization that I have to do just because I'm using more variables. But uh, after that, it all comes down to just reporting the same things too. So. Let's, uh, let's try that again, and instead we're going to try and work with a different value. So I'm going to turn this one off real quick. All right, so we go back, and now we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to look at the damage value um, and see when that changes. So I'm going to pause it. We're going to go to our quick save, and I'm going to hold A and advance frames until the damage value um, address changes to what I'm expecting. Um, so in this case, advance, advance, advance. And if you remember before, the crit was determined at 227. So we're going to be at a very different point when we come through now, because the damage value isn't calculated until it goes through the entire animation. So just keep on trucking. And there we go. Uh, according to this, we do 266 damage, and that's at uh, frame 270, 256. And just to, to make sure that that's accurate, let it pop out. Yep, 266. So we, we've got the right address. So you know, we're, we're working just on this guy. Um, go back. We're going to start it up again. Uh, and then right before the 256, we're going to stop at 254, make a new save state, and 
Instead, we're going to turn on this different script that I have set up for calculating the damage ranges. So again, um, do the toggle, and from here it should just run. So, so far we have a minimum damage of 254 and a maximum damage of 266. And it averages out just somewhere in the middle at around 261, 262. So, I mean, it's still working all the same way, um, but again, we're reporting different information on it based on just how we tracked it. And yeah, that's that's the general overview. Uh, obviously, this is something that you'll have to adapt per game, but it all comes down to knowing where your RNG is coming from uh, and what values you can actually look at that'll tell you whether or not you've, uh, you've found what you want. And a lot of that will just come straight from um, doing RAM watch, doing RAM search, and just finding something that meets uh, what you're expecting out of an event. So in this case, I went through RAM searched and found an instance where uh, a crit happened, and then I just found something that was different in the memory and, and worked from there. So once you have that as your starting block, this script is, is pretty easy to work with and finding what you want. And again, this is brute forcing it, so it's not ideal. Uh, the ideal is that you'd still dig in and, and find the actual algorithm um, in the the assembly, but that's a lot of times a little bit more time consuming than, than what we'd actually like to put into that. But there you go, that's uh, a general overview. Uh, I put the um, a paste bin for each of the, the scripts that I showed off here in the, the video description, so you can check that out and use it and modify it as you need it. Um, I make no claims about the neatness or the <laughs> the overall functionality of my code, so use it at your own risk, but uh, it should be a reasonable start for testing individual things. I've used this on uh, a PlayStation game, I've used it on a couple SNES titles. It should work on most things so long as you actually understand kind of where it's pulling the, the RNG values from and, and what kind of conditions you're actually looking for. But yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching.